Okay. Um, you know, I, I talked a little bit about after the game. Obviously, it was a disappointing loss. Um, you know, pretty much what you saw on tape is pretty much how you felt after the game. Is uh, It wasn't lack of effort necessarily. It was just lack of execution at critical moments. It was disappointing. Our kids are disappointed. Our coaches are disappointed. But at the end of the day, it didn't define us. And we, we go back to work. And I know our kids are uh, really focused and excited about getting back on the field. There's that uh, the old bad taste gets in your mouth, and all you want to do is get it out. And uh, the only way you can do that is go back to work. Uh, we have really, really are emphasizing um, attention to detail and preparation um, and the way we go about our business. Um, so that we can do a better job in those critical moments, critical situations, so we can execute a higher level. Um, obviously, we're getting ready for Point University, who we played a year ago. Um, you know, to be honest with you, there's only nine guys on their two deep that even played for them last year. Um, so it's almost, when you look at it, it's a completely different personnel deal um, than they had a year ago. And, and uh, when you look at them, obviously, I think on offense, their quarterback is really, really athletic can run, can throw. They do a lot of RPO stuff with him, run pass option stuff. He's a good player. He's a really good player. Um, he, he's a difference maker for them. Um, defensively, they got a lot of new faces, some same guys in the secondary that we played against last year. And, uh, and each week, to be honest with you, there's new guys that show up on the roster, um, you know, that get eligible as, as the weeks go on. So, But I'll be honest with you, um, it's all about Kennesaw State right now. It's about us getting ready to go play the best football we can. I wouldn't care if we're playing the Green Bay Packers, Point University, Liberty. It doesn't matter who we play this. We got to go get ready to play the best we can play. And that's things we can control, and that's things we got to work on and get better at. So that's really our emphasis right now is just is going out and, and, and preparing to be the best football team we can be on Saturday. Well, um, when you look at overall and, and, and you say you take all three phases of the game and you kind of break down where the things happen, um, you know, the game started out offensively. We take the ball down the field, got a nice little drive going after a good kick return. And uh, on third down, third and goal, we have a miscue on the snap. On fourth and goal, we turn a guy loose. And I'll be honest with you, that's just kind of how the game went offensively. It might have not been that particular error of that person, um, because it's a team game, but we got in critical situations, we weren't able to make things happen. And it even magnified it more when we don't take care of our business fielding punts. When we have six possessions of 10 that start inside the 25, we have three possessions that start inside the 10, um, it even becomes more magnified. Um, we got to do a better job of fielding punts and make sure we give ourselves the best chance to be successful from a field position, because early on it was a field position game. It was very obvious. It's a field position game. And then I said after the game on defense that I felt like we played good enough to win, and we probably did. We had 44 missed assignments. So in all honesty, I look at it as they probably should have never scored a point if everybody does what they're supposed to and just go where they're supposed to. Not anything extraordinary, just kind of doing your job. So I think when you look at it, and the last thing but not the least is we got to coach better. I mean, it starts with me. I got to do a better job. Our coaches got to do a better job. Um, the attention to detail with everything we do in game, out of game. Um, I think as a, as a team, as a team starting with me, we, we just got to do a better job. And um, I mean, there's all kinds of things that happen. You look at the penalties at critical times. You look at the, we got into late in the game and we were having issues with the snap count. They were mimicking it. But at the end of the day, it was, it was happening and, um, it just, you know, as, as much as we kept fighting, and our kids did, now they fought. I mean, you, you would think the door was shut, and we kept fighting. It just, um, you could say you couldn't buy a break, but I'm a believer you kind of make your own breaks, you know, by the way you, way you attack things. So um, we, we're, we're going to work to get better at that. I think it was a wake-up call for us. Let's just be real about it. They sat on that sucker for a year. I knew they would. They sat on it for a year, and they were on a mission. And they played about as good a football game as you could play now and took us to double overtime. It's a little bit of your perspective. Uh, they played about as good as they could play now. Zero turnovers. Zero. 
Zero. That gives you a chance to win. I don't care who you are. And uh, so I give them credit. They, they, they played exception well. But I think as, uh, as, we, as we continue to build, as we continue to go into our 13th game as a program, that uh, this is a this is it's a learning process for us about you got to get ready every week and I, I talked a lot about that going into the season you got to be ready especially this year last year it was the element of the unknown this year nope not going to happen we got to bring our A game we got to prepare to bring our A game every week and that's just the way it is that's the way it's going to be from here on. Well, I think if you ask our guys, and you'll have a chance to talk to a couple of them here in a few minutes, but uh, it, Monday was, uh, you could tell it was still lingering around a little bit, just to be brutally honest. But I'm going to tell you, it was still lingering with me a little bit. It was a tough one. But at the end of the day, I don't care if you win, lose, or draw. And we've said this since we've been here. We're going to go in on Monday. We're going to watch the tape. We're going to learn from our mistakes. We're going to go out Monday. We're going to correct some of them. And we're going to get started on next week. I don't care if we lose in double overtime, we lose 50 to nothing, we win 50 to nothing. That's what we've said we're going to do from here on. I thought yesterday's practice is probably one of the better we've had in a while, which tells you our guys, you know, I think we're all on the same page with coaches and players. We're ready to go get back on the grass. And the first thing you can do is go practice to get yourself better so that you can work towards And all we've talked about this week is just taking one day at a time. We're going to have a great Tuesday. We talked about attention to detail Tuesday. We're going to have a great Wednesday, great Thursday, great Friday, so that we can prepare ourselves to have a great Saturday. And that's all you can do. You know, you just got to move on. And I told them, I told them after the game, I mean, one game will not define us as a program or what we're doing. Um, but I think it's a great learning experience to learn from and so we can, so we can uh, move forward. But I think we're just ready to, to continue to prepare to go play. I, I really think our kids are – I know I am, but I know they are too. I know I, I know our guys, and they've always responded when things have kind of gone at – when we've hit adversity, they find a way to respond. But uh, but they'll be ready to go. Any further yes. Um, obviously, I think I, to, I communicated with you guys. Trey, Trey's out. Uh, Miles White's out. Um, Jake McKenzie's out. Des Billingsley's out. Big Z's out. Justin Elam. Uh, hurt himself yesterday in practice. He's out. Um, so all those guys will be out for Saturday on the game. Got complete confidence to Chandler. He came in. He's played in several games for us before. So, um, you know, he's got to come in and get it done. But he's a I mean, he's a sharp young man. He's on top of things. Uh, um, I think every, every quarterback has maybe strengths and weaknesses that you play to a little bit. Um, he's a pretty balanced kid. He's really sharp. At throwing the football, it's not like he's got a cannon, but he's he's pretty good at throwing. He's pretty good at running. He's going to get you in the right play. So um, he's pretty balanced as a player. Uh, you know, he's not el overwhelming in one area or the other. He's just pretty balanced football player, sharp football player. His his biggest asset is is his uh, mentally. He's he, he's his, he's just one of the better ones I've been around as far as understanding the game and what's going on. And he studies the game. I mean, every day I've been in the office, he's in somebody's office watching game tape. And, and that's kind of what you want. So, um, you know, I think it, uh, you know, we're going to play to what we can, what our personnel will give us the ability to do, obviously. Um, there's things we got to do, but um, but we feel good about him. Daniels is back up. Daniels still learning, a lot of ability, still learning. You know, he's a redshirt freshman. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes you forget these kids, you know, he's a redshirt freshman. Chandler's a redshirt sophomore. Um, but he'll be the backup. And then if you go up front, um, Big Z's out. But you got four guys that are, that are going to be predominantly playing. you got Braylon, Dev, uh, Devin Pusley, Mackenzie Billingsley, and uh, Nick Parada. And those four guys, who will start? I, I, honestly, I don't know today. But those four guys are going to all play. Uh, Des Billingsley backed up by Jace White. But, I'll, but you're going to see probably Raekwon Chapman and Zach Blaylock playing, playing a ton at that position um, on Saturday. So we'll be moving some things around a little bit secondary-wise based on what's going on. But I think you'll see a lot of Raekwon and a lot of Zach Blaylock um, playing at that position um, on Saturday. Uh, you know, at it, it, it two back you got – or B back you got uh, 
you know, Micah Reed and Jonah Huff um, are the two guys right now at that position. Um, Miles White's out. Darnell Holland moves up. And uh, the fourth guy well, could be Shivers, could be Steven Johnson. Um, so that's kind of from a depth standpoint where those guys are. I think everybody I mentioned was out. That's kind of the depth behind them. Mm -hmm. Confidence in him, but uh, you know this was the young man that was the uh, first commit. He was the first one to send in the the NLI on that first signing day and all that. Can you explain what it was when you were recruiting him? What gave you the idea that this is the guy that could be the perfect fit for us? Uh, the number one quality is he is a natural born leader. He he he's a leader. Uh, he leads by example. He leads by the way he communicates. Um, when you look back at that first class, those were some qualities that were really big for us. You know, guys that could lead, that, the way they carried themselves, how they went about their business. Um, and he's not one of those that's going to overwhelm you with his size. He's not going to overwhelm you with his speed. He's not going to overwhelm you with his arm strength. But the sucker finds a way to make plays. I mean, we'll go – we do the one-minute one, one minute drill all the time in practice, and he extends a play as good as anybody I've been around. I mean, the thing breaks down, and he extends it, and he'll find Xavier or Sump or or, chat, or somebody down the field, and he'll make a play. Um, you know, he, he he's just a winner. The kid's a winner, you know. And, uh, um, you know, he's had to battle through a lot of stuff since he's been here. I mean, he had ACL injury and – and all that, and he's battled back. But his demeanor in the meeting room's never changed. The way he's gone about his business has never changed. And what's great about him is he sits back there when he knew he probably wasn't going to play. You know what? And, and every rep he was learning from. So when that moment came, like last year, you look at the Coastal Carolina game, he steps in. We're down on about the, heck, I can't remember, probably five-yard line. He steps in, throws a slant for a touchdown. Right off the bench, he warmed up. You know what I mean? Because he's been doing that the whole time he's been here. He's been watching tape. He's been getting himself ready. So that's why this moment, you know, it's his start. So it'll be a moment. But um, and he'll make some mistakes. He's not by no means is he going to be perfect. But um, I just, I, you know, like a lot of our kids, I believe in him, and you know, we'll go do what we can do. I think he'll be able to do some things. A little more balance for us, maybe that'll help us right now. To be honest with you, but we'll see how it goes. Chris, here you go. Uh, coach um, Dixon uh, points to the head coach. He was on Florida last year facing him this weekend for the Red Skin Raiders. Any more on him? Well, I mean, obviously they did a really good job against us at shorter with their personnel a year ago. Um, you know, and and known Coach Dixon for a while. He's been around the game for a while. Um, obviously, he took the job at point late. Um, you know, there's also a defensive coordinator there. And so anytime you're looking at that, you're trying to see who's calling it, who's doing it. And, and, and right now, they're not the same. They don't line up the same way and do the same things they did at Shorter. Now, that doesn't mean they won't come in and do that against us. But uh, it looks like the defensive coordinator, I believe, is George Brewer. Is uh, is doing it right now um, because it's not the same, the same alignments and stuff um, that they had in, in that game. So doesn't mean they can't come in and do it because that won't be the first time it's happened. You know, somebody come change a little bit what they do, but uh, that hasn't been the case so far. Um, obviously, they're familiar with what we're doing. They played against us. The coach Brewer's there last year. Coach Dixon's been against us before, but I mean, they got our tape. Again, it's kind of like somebody asked me, do they have the, does somebody have the formula to stop it? I mean, for the most part, people know what people are going to do. It's all about execution in the one-on-one -on -one matchups and, and not beating yourself. You know, I don't care what offense it is. It doesn't matter what you're doing. So, um, you know, they, they do have guys that have been around a little bit. But, uh, you know, I don't know that that's going to have a huge impact on it one way or the other right now, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm going to go back again. It's going to be about – it's going to be about us. It's going to be about us and, and, and how we get ourselves ready to go. That's really going to be the bottom line.
Thanks for coaching. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate your time. Awesome. Appreciate you guys coming.